Yeah, like I said, every month since January has had a theme. Um, January was um, a month that I was very scared. And um, I remember writing in my journal and I remember uh, just hearing, just getting to the book of Chronicles, uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20 and reading about, I believe it was um, King Jehoshaphat and him and his people. Uh, there was people that were trying to come and uh, fight them and, and, and kill them off and do away with their land and much more. And the Lord told them that, you know, prophetically uh, told them that like, hey, um, the battle is not yours, you know, but you're going to show up to the battleground and you're going to witness your opposition and you won't have to fight. And so when they made it to the battleground, their op, everybody was dead. It took them three days to carry all of the things that they were owed, all of the gifts. It took them three days to carry it back to their home. And that story still sticks with me because a lot of times we think that we have to fight. We think we have to fight. We think that every battle is ours. We we want to, we, and it just it honestly also tells me that we still battle with control. We still have the challenge of control. And um, I mean, imagine showing up to a battlefield and the person that you're supposed to fight is already dead. And everything that you're owed is sitting right on top of that body. And God is like, all right, carry them all up. All right, y'all can go. It took them three days. And so the blessings that overflowed in January was was very, very wild for me. Like, I was actually very overwhelmed. Um, And I wasn't even financially where I needed to be either. But the Lord kept providing. February, um, I still kind of battled with a little control. I was getting blessed, but I still battled with a little control. And so I had to start learning about his yoke. And I was like, what is this? Everybody's always talking about his yoke. And, you know, I had to study what that was, too. And um, just understanding that his yoke was his burden. And it just so happened to be that that was one of the words at church one day. And it talked about how his yoke is light and easy and it will give you rest. So I was like, you know what? I need to, I need some of that. I need that. I, I really, really need that. And I started reading, um, reading about that. And I w- realized that you know, his, we are, I'm supposed to ask him for his yoke. Yes, it's light and easy, and it really is, but he wants it in exchange for my will. He wants, he wants, he wants to take all of my burdens, all the things that I think I can carry and that I can control and that I can, and that I think will, will work for me. He wants to be able to take that so that he can give me his yoke. So, cause his burden, it doesn't care. It doesn't have any weight. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not heavy. It's not here to harm me, but it's to give me rest from what I used to know. It gives me rest from my will. And I felt like that was the theme of February. And that's definitely what it was. Um, and then March, that, that uh, theme was not to let my hands be weak. And um, I just stumbled upon that too in the word. Um, I believe that was also from uh, Second Chronicles. and. Um, it said, let my hands not be weak. And what I got, because, you're, because your work will be rewarded. And what I got from that was that I got to keep going. And the reason why that was very on time, that sp- particular word was on time because in the month of March, I got very discouraged. I got very, very discouraged. There was episodes that I had planned. There was things that I had written out that did not go the way that I wanted it. And I had to get in the space to, to, to now tell myself, okay, Clarice, Remember, you getting in here is because the Lord sent you here. He brought you here. He gave you a gift. He gave you something. And so because he brought you here, don't you think that he knows exactly what he's doing? So I had to now sit down and say, okay, turn that volume down, turn down your noise, and and just listen. And so sitting down and realizing that, okay, just because you wrote it out doesn't mean that it's trash. 
because I, I can I can be a little bit extreme sometimes. Like, okay, I wasted my time. I wrote all this out. Now I can't even use it. And God is like, that's it doesn't mean that you can't use it. Parking lot it. Something I learned in corporate America. Corporate America. Parking lot stuff. Put it in the back. Put it in the backlog. You know. Um, just, it doesn't mean that you will never use it. Just put it in the backlog, put it in the archive. It's okay. Cause you might need it again one day. You know, there was, um, some disappointments that I felt like, you know, I was kind of, and, and I think that's when I was really understanding this space is that, you know, scheduling, scheduling is, can be very discouraging. Cause sometimes, you know, people's time does not match with yours. Shoot days. Um, your team's, your team has a life, you know? You have a life, you know? And so just knowing how to um, uh, have uh, the mindset to be like, okay, breathe, stop, and, um, and, and think just for a second that, you know, you can go back to your source again and go and ask him, okay, what do I do now that this, this person may not be available or this may not work in this situation or that time doesn't work? What do I do now? Because it's very, very discouraging. Um, and so just learning how to understand that it's okay that it doesn't go your way, know that it's still going, something is going to work because you're not here for, for no reason.